the Eyes of Texas. Hello, and welcome to this edition of The Eyes of Texas, as we take a trip through time and the Lone Star State. I'm Bill Baessa. And I'm Dominique Soxa. Coming up, Mount Rushmore in Texas. That's right. Of course, it's so big, it had to come from Texas. Speaking of big and tall, the citizens of Texas wanted to commemorate the heroes of the Texas Revolution right in our own backyard at the San Jacinto Battleground. The horses on the prairie is nothing new, but polo on the prairie? All right, that's different. It's called the sport of kings. We're going to look at polo in Texas and how it's helping a great cancer center. You know, it seems that Phil Archer gets all the good assignments. His never-ending search for good barbecue takes him to Lockhart, where a family feud leads to a battle for the title of best barbecue in Texas. You know, land gets lost to developers all the time, but there's at least one group looking to bring the land back to its natural state and back to the people of Texas. Gospel and blues singer Cecil Franklin never made it big, but he played with some big names. We'll watch him perform from the front porch of his home in the neighborhood where he grew up in Nacogdoches. And in the old days, in the heart of a Texas town was the general store. I mean, you could get everything from cradles to caskets there. Well, a few such stores are still around, and we head to one to meet Opal in the little town of Bradshaw. Eighty-three-year-old Opal Hunt doesn't have many customers anymore, but she still gets up bright and early every morning in Bradshaw and goes through the motions of her job at the Mercantile store. There are a lot of memories here. We started in, uh, it's about two miles, a mile and a half west of here, at a little place called Audra. And we still go by Audra Mercantile. We never did change it. I, I said that I just like to ride Audra Mercantile. And uh, then when the railroad came um, through here in 1909, why, Papa moved us over here. Bradshaw once had a population of 200 people. That's when Opal's father, Charles Minnow Hunt, bought out the place from his partners. At one time, the post office was housed in this building. The old cage and a couple of ancient desks verify that. Minnow used it as an office for a while and kept careful records of his business transactions. Opal still has the ledger books. This was a gathering place on election day, too. The people of Bradshaw used to come here to vote and then to watch the results posted on a blackboard. But the chief business here has always been selling food and farm supplies. Minnow Hunt took care of that on one side of the building. Opal's mother cooked meals and sold dry goods on the other side. The over, over on the dry goods side was Mama's particular side. And, uh, but she worked all over the store. She cooked and did whatever, you know. And, uh, but that was her side over there. And, and so, um, and then of course, we think of it now, I don't think of it so much as, uh, and, and we resent the folks here of uh, being called a uh, ghost town. I said, no, we're not a ghost town, not by any means. And, uh, but the uh, old timers that come back, they like to think of, there's one of the boys the other day said, yes, on Saturday, well, I said, they remember the, the, the sidewalk out there was just lined up with the men, you know, and it was always a whittling and, and spitting, you know, they chewed tobacco, you know, and they'd, they'd have their whittling out there. But of course, we don't think of that now. Uh, you don't see anything like that now. And then, of course, uh, that is before we had the pavement that come through here. This is a farm to market road, and we had our hitching post on the other side. The old Audra store is part general store and part museum nowadays. It's not on any main highway. That was what almost killed the town, and that's what's threatening to kill the store. But Opal Hunt is always here in case anybody wanders up for a look-see. She eats her breakfast at 4 a.m dinner at 10 a.m. and supper at about 2 p.m. Dinner is usually a toasted marshmallow on the very stove that her mother used to cook on. At what Opal calls midday, about 9 a.m., she consumes a cup of cool Dr. Pepper. The Audra store is certainly not the oldest one we have encountered over the years, but it may be the most authentic. It hasn't been discovered yet by the antique dealers and the TV people. Half of the store has some wonderful antiques, but Opal won't part with them. 
They are family mementos, and some are valuable only to Opal. The ashtray collection of an uncle, an old baseball cap, an old stove where Mama Hunt used to prepare meals, and a dining table where the family used to eat them. Opal has had visitors from as far away as Italy, and now and then she's here for days without a customer. But when they show up, Opal is here, not to intrude, but to answer questions. I don't want to, uh, them to feel like that I'm a following them around. I just say, well, go, go back there, and, and if they want me to, tell them some. Of course, some of them just come in, they want to see, and they're just in and out. You can tell they're not very interested. Well, that's okay, too. <laughs> Opal Hunt has never been married. She calls herself the old maid of Bradshaw. The family almost closed down the store in 1980 when a brother died, but a nephew in Abilene saved it at least for a while. He offered to take care of the books, and Opal volunteered to keep it open. It's too much a part of her life now to give it up. Uh, I just suppose that uh, I'd be sitting in a rocking chair up at home. But the kids got together. I have a sister still living, and uh, my nieces and nephews. And uh, they thought, as I said, I thought that if would close the doors, that'd be it. And uh, they thought I'd be happier here. Give me something to do. And that's the reason why the store is open now. It's for me. And uh, give me something to do, in which I dearly love it. You know, someone has said, he who enjoys his work has a vacation every day. And I said, well, that's me. Opal outlived Bradshaw, which is now on the list of Texas ghost towns. In 2003, Opal moved to a nursing home, still sipping her cool Dr. Pepper every single day. She passed away in 2005 at the age of 103. Well, coming up next, the great idea that moved a mountain. Then, we celebrate the anniversary of the San Jacinto Monument. And coming up later, we head to the barbecue capital of Texas.